concentration, Heather. That's boring. Green light the SF. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. He will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get to take the law. We enforce it. And at the end of the day, each and every member can go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and it is February 2nd, 2017. And we are coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We're on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday at a new time, 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern on the Nonpartisan Liberty for All media and radio network, which now runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can listen to the live stream on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. And to the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom, exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. And, of course, we are always happy to hear from you. You can either reach us via phone at 702-470-7664, that's 702-470-7664 or via Skype username nonpartisan liberty for all that's username nonpartisan liberty for all just send a, us a contact request and we will get you on the air with uh with your name and what you want to talk about and if you forget any of that information or you'd like to check out our website which also has original articles blogs and other things go to nonpartisan liberty for all.com and you can check us out there so tonight i'm kind of planning on doing a shorter uh show and i kind of went back and forth i didn't know if I was going to actually even do a show tonight. Um, But as I've been kind of, you know, not really, I've been doing a show every week, but my schedule has been kind of, you know, crazy. And I haven't been doing every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I don't remember the last time I actually did all three days. And part of that is um, the listens were really good uh, up to like a couple of weeks ago. It's kind of recently like they went down. And then sometimes what will happen is then people, if they don't have any new shows, they'll listen to the old shows. So I, I kind of look at that and I haven't had as much time to... I was talking about this last night to research uh, the things that I want to talk about and as far as preparation. And I think I need to do more of that on the weekend. And I've been talking for a while that I want to do YouTube videos and and things like that. And, And not only for the video itself and to have another form of media to get my, uh, points and goals across in a different way, but also to promote the show 
as well because there's a big difference between listening to a two-hour radio show a minimum of two hours, sometimes more, and listening to a five to ten minute YouTube video or watching a five to ten minute YouTube video because that obviously would be uh, video as well where now all the shows are on YouTube but it's just a picture and the audio's there. So anyway, I ended up deciding to do a show today but it's going to be kind of just an open, more open format and I have a topic I'm going to talk about, but there's some other things I'll bring up and uh, I'm just going to kind of talk in, in, in general about uh, some things and relating to government and what, um, what else, <laughs> police and things like that. I think um, although that's you know, what the purpose of the show is that maybe in the past month or so, like I did shows on stuff like Sandy Hook and more conspiracy type things, um, as opposed to just facts about the government and what it is and how people don't see it for what it is and things like that. So, And I haven't really covered any stories in the news uh, relating to police, neither. So there's a couple stories I'm going to cover. And then we'll talk a little about the main show topic uh, regarding the difference between people having an opinion about something or values and just living that or even judging people based on that, but not forcing them to adopt their values and people that want to force you to adopt their values via the barrel of a gun, literally. So one of the things that I had talked about yesterday that or didn't really get into detail, but I had mentioned uh, yesterday we were talking about how the issue of police and the police state and the militarization of police and how I believe that they shouldn't even exist. And that's how bad they are to all people that it, it's turned into, at least when it comes to government media, it's, totally turned into a uh, racial issue that every time somebody talks about the police, you can't talk about the police without getting into race. And of course I talked about how that changed a lot of things and how I think a lot of people even forgot about, not forgot about, but maybe changed their opinion on things and started supporting the police more, and it kind of turned things around in a in in a bad way. So the um point that I was trying to make yesterday that it had nothing to do with police, but just in the whole government takeover and it being a generational thing and them doing it over time. So I talked about guns, for example, and drugs, and I think it's so crazy. And this is by design how the people, most of the people that support gun rights don't support the right to put what you want in your body drugs and the parties are set up that way on purpose i had mentioned that yesterday that they have this two-party system that they control the government and the powers that be And it's purposely set up in a way that neither party stands for freedom. Both of them want to control you. 
and they just want to control you in different ways, or at least they seem to come off like they want to control you in different ways, but they really don't. It's like the fascists and the first the socialist or whatever, but it's really all the, when it comes down to it, it's the same shit. It's the same result. Essentially. It's a ruling class of elites that has everything they want with the rest of society on the borderline of poverty. And no matter which way you go, that's essentially the result. And that's the planned result. And if you look at in the, what, week and a half or maybe two, almost two weeks now that Trump has been president, it's all the same shit. Now, on the surface, people are going to say, oh, no, it's totally different, but it it's not. You look at the statements from the director from the CIA that I had mentioned uh, about wanting to, you know, get into more profiling and spy, uh, spying and stuff like that. Trump's... Uh, bullshit about the military and uh having a strong this is just so ignorant it's just and i don't even think even he's that stupid that oh if we build up the military more not like you know we don't already have over thousands of bases around the world or anything and all of these weapons and it's over 50 percent of the budget or something like that it takes up uh more than anything else in the uh budget but it's still not big enough but if he makes it big enough it will scare people to uh attack the u.s first of all nobody's fucking attacking the u.s anyway and really that's what's gonna happen because they're not already scared of the military that's why what country has attacked the u.s ever except for japan in world war ii so do you think a bigger military will what it will um terrorism they will stop terrorism they'll be too scared because of the military obviously that's bullshit So you look at, well, why would they want a bigger military? Well, most likely they want a bigger military to control things here or along with that, go to other countries and do whatever the fuck they want. Um, Although this story is kind of... It's not clear, but he talked about helping with cartels in Mexico and who knows if that involves the army or not. Supposedly, you know, I saw an interview that it doesn't and I don't know, whatever. And this is, of course, the type of guy who will be like, hey, you piss me off. I'll send troops over there. And I think that's exactly what the powers that be want him to do at the same time. So expanding the military like it's not big enough and militarizing the police even more because he talks about, you know, police supporting the police. The CIA has a blank check, all of this shit. So, I mean, it's the same shit. It's more control. The government is going to take more and more control and they generationally done it. But my point was, and how they've brainwashed people over the years to change their opinions. And you could say in some things, they didn't necessarily brainwash people, but in some things that are positive where opinions changed, like obviously slavery and women's uh, right to vote and stuff like that. But to me that's just it's a totally different concept than 
things like drugs where drugs were legal the government had never interfered with what someone puts into their body and i've talked about this a million times until i said 1917 i think yesterday 1914 i believe the harris act which was about heroin so but before that it was on the shelves at stores it was no big deal same with guns i mean there were no background checks. There were none of that. I think the first laws on guns or restrictions on guns were in the, the th- 1937. I know, I, re- I know there was something in 1937. Um, I did some research, actually a lot, like years ago, um, when I did a – got into a lot of detail uh, and did a show on um, guns probably in 2014 – and gun control and got a little into the history of that. So my point being is that they generationally over generations convince people that these are not rights and freedoms, even gun supporters. Uh, there's this guy who he calls himself a conservative libertarian. Uh, the libertarian has been bastardized, so I can't, the, the real definition of libertarian, he's not a libertarian, but a Ben Shapiro who does say some things that make sense, but, uh, also not all his facts are quote unquote facts. I mean, or all his statements are facts. I mean, he said he talked about crack and cocaine and crack being as addictive as cocaine. And I'm sure he knows from experience. Right. So, um, and I had just done a show on uh, the doctor, Carl Hart, who's done 25 years of uh, ha- experiments and 25 years. He has 25 years of experience doing uh, as a neuroscientist, focusing on drugs and what they do to the brain and all of these things and whatnot, who said essentially they're the same thing. And just because, you know, it's mixed with baking soda and there's an extra molecule or whatever, it's still essentially the same thing. It's just cheaper and it doesn't get you high as long because you don't get as much. But he had said that he was for background checks, of course. And so will probably most people that are members of the NRA or are gun supporters or whatever. But if you go back to, say, 1920, what would people say? And in 1920, and I don't know what people would say, but I'm assuming they wouldn't even think about it, to be honest. Background checks, like, And part of it would probably be, how would you even do one? So it's something that, I mean, you could do one locally, but that's about it. And that was before Social Security. So you didn't have a Social Security number, which is the numerical ID to fucking track everybody and link everybody to. So... My my point being is that to me, they've even been able, it shows how effective they are, that s- somebody or people that support these issues, that support or at least claim to, um, you know, support gun rights quote unquote because how can you to me you're not supporting one the second amendment but fuck the second amendment because it's irrelevant your right you have the right to possess whatever you want as far as i'm concerned what authority does a government have to tell you that you cannot possess a gun i don't give a fuck what you've done to be honest and most people that, you know, have done something uh, like felons, although 
a lot of felonies aren't even violent, but can get a gun illegally anyway. And now you can even make guns with 3D printers. So, But the, the point being is that, you know, they say, do you want a criminal to have a gun? Well, what's the definition of a criminal anyway? Is somebody a criminal that already went to jail and served their time? Now, if you're talking about somebody, do I want someone who wants to get a gun with the intent to kill somebody? No, I wouldn't want them to have a gun. However, to me, freedom trumps that. And the way around it, obviously, not around it, but if you're a free society, then hopefully somebody else has a gun and shoots the motherfucker for before he does that. But he'll most likely want to get an untraceable gun and not buy a gun at a store where people can see him buying a fucking gun and being able to trace that gun anyway. But the point being that I was talking about this yesterday as an example drugs and and guns and and like i said i think they're so it's funny how to me they're so similar in so many ways and yet they're on the opposite sides although most politicians are anti-drug period although you do have some now that are supporting medical marijuana and marijuana in general or cannabis, but not, you know, legalizing all drugs. That's one of those things that politicians, there's a couple things that they just won't fuck with cops and drugs are two of them. There's probably other ones as well, but, but that's kind of the, you know, as far as people go, people that are Democrats are more apt to support legalizing at least some drugs and the Republicans are more for uh, gun rights. So, or if you want to talk about conservative and conservatives and progressives. But again, back to my point being that the whole thing of changing people's opinions and there's that video of eric holder talking about brainwashing people's thoughts on guns or their opinions on guns so they can slowly take away gun rights and that's their goal and i've talked about that and that's why you know the whole sandy hook uh thing a lot of what i talked about is People don't realize how important that is for the government to completely take over, um, how important it is to get rid of guns first, especially uh, semi-automatic rifles, but handguns as well. And, of course, you take it one step at a time. And they've already taken it to a certain level. They started with background checks. They eliminated a certain amount of people. Now, for example, and he's talked about it himself, so on on air, so I'm sure he wouldn't care about me saying this, but so Mark Edge from Free Talk Live, uh, who I've had on the show and I know personally, went to jail like what, like 20, 30 years ago now and was convicted of a felony. And since he's been out of jail, never been in trouble and you know is a whatever you want to call it a productive member of society so because of something he did 20 years ago or 30 years ago because I think it was in the 80s so it was close to 30 years already because of that he can't protect his family with a gun. 
Now, if somebody's in jail, obviously, okay, you're not going to give somebody in jail a gun. Or if uh, maybe somebody's on probation or something like that. But but that's more, you know, if they get caught with a gun, then they they go back to jail or whatever if they're on uh, parole or something or probation or depending on what the the felony is, I guess. Because, again, you have a lot of felonies that aren't aren't that uh that aren't violent for one and aren't even that serious oh whatever it it's based on like how long you can go to jail if it's over usually um but anyway so it's it should be based on seriousness which it's supposed to be but now it's just there's f- fucking stupid shit that this is a felony. But anyway, um, they have taken the first step already, or more than that, where there were no restrictions on guns. Now there are a bunch of restrictions on guns, depending on the state you're in, but even on a federal level. And a lot of states, it's almost impossible to get a gun or you have to register your guns. You have to be in some gun database. Um, You know, again, depending on the state, you can't have a magazine that can hold more than a certain amount of bullets, background checks at gun shows or between private sales, all of that stuff has happened in at least one or more states and then of course you have what you have on the federal level and so they started with nothing and then got to where they got now with guns it's probably one of the hardest fucking things luckily for them to take away even though they they got a ban on certain semi-automatic uh, weapons, but there were certain things within that ban. I don't think it ever would have passed if it didn't, one, expire. Two, uh, if you already ha- owned one, or if it was made before the year of the ban, you could still go out and buy uh, guns made before that year. You just couldn't buy any any new ones, I guess, just for police and military. And I don't know back then if uh, police, you know, how many of those type of weapons police had. And I'm sure they had them, but not like they do now. So over generations, they've taken away gun rights already. And in places like California and New York, they've even done gun confiscation where people that were eligible, especially California, they were eligible for or they met the criteria to own a gun when they bought it. But they did something after that that violated whatever the uh, laws are in California to be able to own a gun. And they put a bunch, the governor put a bunch of money into it and had these teams that would go and literally uh, confiscate guns that were now, quote unquote, illegal for these people to have. Which is crazy. So you look at that and then you look at drugs. Now, drugs, obviously, they were able to do a lot more where now they're even going after they're making it hard to even get prescription drugs. So they went from not no restrictions on any substance to making it totally illegal or for certain things needing a doctor's prescription to monitoring the doctors uh 
putting them on a schedule, the uh, drugs, and monitoring the doctors and making sure or putting in certain restrictions like they can only have a certain amount of patients that they prescribe them to and they can only prescribe so much and all of this shit, all the restrictions that they have on drugs. So obviously with drugs, it worked and they were able to do whatever they wanted. And at the same time, of course, CIA is bringing it over fucking plane fulls of coke. And speaking of planefuls of coke and drugs, a U.S. Gover- uh, U.S. government IRS attorney was busted for smoking and distributing massive amounts of meth. Um, I guess 500 grams uh, that they were going to sell. And he, he was also caught using them as well. And you think about... I always think about when government officials are charged with crimes, especially cops, because they're never charged with the crime of violating people's rights or fucking people over. They're only charged with, you know, crimes like this. And I always think that they did something or they needed to make an example out of somebody or they pissed somebody off. Because there's so many, you know, imagine how many people in government use fucking drugs. I'm sure at least 50% of Congress, and that's probably a lot lower than the, uh, the actual amount. You know, all the secrets that these fucks have... That's why they're easily controllable, especially with, you know, the FBI, the NSA. I mean, think about when Herbert, uh, not Herbert Hoover, (laughs) fucking J. Edgar Hoover, they were both Hoovers, was in charge and how he had stuff on everybody. and, And now it's the NSA that has stuff on everybody. So, yeah, I mean... The only problem, again, with this is a hypocrisy. I don't give a fuck if somebody sells meth. I think it should be totally legal. And meth is comparable to Adderall. There's not really a difference. The difference is in what the, I guess, ghetto chemists fucking do to it. But... Besides that, it's pretty much the same thing. And Adderall can actually help people. And that's based on the research of uh, Dr. Carl Hart and him coming out and breaking all these myths about drugs uh, based on actual research and findings where he really didn't have any agenda. Because at first, the reason he even got into it was... He thought, you know, drugs destroyed his community um, where he had come from. And he doesn't look at it that way now. So. It's. It's fucked up where and we'll see what happens with this guy, uh, how long he even ends up going to jail and if he gets sentenced like a regular person would and maybe he he, maybe he does but I I always think that there's there's something going on because there's so many there even ones that we've heard about and ones that were caught or were rumors about and we're doing drugs and 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 again i i don't really care i don't really have any problem with it the problem i have is the hypocrisy if you're enforcing laws and all laws are enforced by violence at the point of a gun because of course they're backed up by the police and this guy's in the irs so he's extorting money from people and then he's selling drugs on the side. I mean, what? 
I mean, what's what's even the rationale? What's going through this guy's fucking head? First of all, I mean, the using is one thing, but the selling, he's selling five hundred grams of meth. They charged him with conspiring with others to distribute at least five hundred grams of meth. That's crazy. So you would think like if you're in the IRS, if you want to do something illegal to make money that you could do something to uh, fuck with tax returns and skim some money somehow or something. I don't know. So another corrupt politician. What a surprise. Or a government employee. I guess he's not a politician. Um, He's an attorney that works for the IRS. So, I don't know. And he's been there for five years. And he's in the... (laughs) This is even more funny. He's in the Office of Personal Responsibility. So, or sorry, Professional Responsibility. He wasn't very professional in his job. And his job consisted of investigating attorneys, CPAs, and other tax professionals based on reports of misconduct. This guy had to have pissed somebody off, man. And they snitched on him. It's got to be some shit like that. But um, that's what he did. And look what happens to him. So... But again, I, I I would think with Congress, man, the majority of uh, not just Congress, but government employees doing drugs is just a high percentage. And the amount that ever get charged with anything is very low. But anyway, so... What I wanted to mainly talk about, and I'm probably going to end the show uh, early today, as I had said in the beginning, but the whole wanting to force your values and your opinions on people via law. And, you know, that especially applies to something like drugs to say that, well, drugs should be illegal because I believe they're bad. Well, what the fuck does it matter what you believe? If you believe they're bad, then don't use them. Or the bullshit that they put out there about you would think, and this is why guns and drugs are so similar that, you know, guns and and drugs both, like, operate on their own. That they walk around hurting and killing people. Like, guns murder people on their own. Drugs murder people. And drugs, a lot of the shit that you think about drugs is is propaganda. And even with guns, a lot of the uh, things that they, they... they focus just on certain things to make it look like, you know, it happens every fucking day. There's a school shooting or something when it's a small percentage and the chances of you being in one are, you know, like a million to one or something. Things like that. But we live in a, I think in a world really where people not only want to, of course, control their own lives, which is fine. I I'm, I want to control my own life, um, obviously. But they want to judge other people. But not only that, they want to force them to comply to the same standards that they want to live by. And that's when they get the government involved and you've had instances of 
And this is something that uh, Ken Shorjan, who's on every other Wednesday, uh, has brought up. Like a lot of laws get passed because you have, say, this is exactly what happened with drinking and driving laws being uh, how they are that, you know, a group of mothers get together and they, that kids got killed um, or even just one and start a group and then you get these uh political fucking operatives that fund them and then they're able to get to a congressperson to introduce a law and they fucking take it on as their project they're gonna be a hero and and then they pass that shit or it's somebody who you know has money already and they're able to get that access to get these laws passed and you see it now with what they're doing with painkillers what they're doing with uh kratom was a perfect example where they were ready to schedule one it and i don't know if it was if there was this one woman in a documentary that blames her son's suicide on uh, Kratom. And he was th- he was on antidepressants and all this shit, and he was taking Kratom as well. So it couldn't have been that he was just depressed and the antidepressants or whatever that are fucking untested and not uh, all natural or anything uh, like Kratom is. And I think he jumped off a fucking bridge. But anyway, so she blamed that and said, you know, it's not over and this is my whole, like, took it up as her whole thing. And she was in Florida and it ended up getting banned in Florida. So maybe she had something to do with that. But it's like she needs to go, and I'm just using her as an example, like, save the world from this dangerous thing. Because people are like little kids that can't make decisions for themselves. The government has to do that for you. And if you believe that something is wrong, then everybody has to live that way. And they got to be forced to live that way by the barrel of a gun. Now, that's what ignorant people try to push. They don't realize that what they're doing is falling right into the hands of the government. And what the government is trying to do is take away everybody's freedom so they can control it everyone and everything. And again, they're getting people to ask for their freedoms to be taken away. It is the most, it is so insane. Even background checks is taking away your freedom. And I say that in the, in because databases They want to have all your information in this database. They want to have your mental records, your doctor's records. That's an invasion of privacy. That's, I mean, and now they're all in databases anyway, but have all this information on you just so you can get a good background check when you buy a fucking gun. When you look at the stats of how many people are murdered by guns or how many people die, it's not even 1%. And again, why don't you look at the things that are killing the the majority of people, which are heart attacks and cancer, where a study came out that half of the people that are dying from cancer are dying from fucking chemotherapy. But no, because it doesn't fit the agenda. And it's like I'm I'm I am like a fucking broken record because I've covered a lot of stuff. I guess in my almost three years doing this show and I've done some shows that have totally sucked. And especially I think more recently, um, not having, you know, when I had co-hosts, it was a lot better, but I don't know. And there was so much that I've covered, but there's a lot of it within there 
that it's like I have to keep repeating because people just don't get it and don't understand or care to understand or want to understand. And there's some people that just don't want to be free. That they believe in socialism and communism or fascism or whatever. Whatever ism they're using to be controlled. So I'm going to take a quick break. I have tons of clips, um, but I need to uh, eat some chicken real quick. And then we'll come back and talk a little more about that and some other things involving government and and then end the show a little early today. Um, Of course, again, if you want to bring up anything that relates to just government, politics, news, whatever, 702-470-7664, or uh, username on Skype, Nonpartisan Liberty for All. And you can also email us at uh, nonpartisanlibertyforall@gmail.com. All that information is on the website, nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. So check out the website. Check out some of the articles. I have a petition that I wrote that I'm trying to promote. It's a Declaration of Independence 2017 that basically declares independence from the government. Again, but a different government this time. Uh, So I hope people read that. It's on the Facebook pages. It's at the website. The petitions uh, are linked there. I need to go and actually create some more, but I was very discouraged by the amount of people. And of all those people, uh, which was very low, none of them actually were people that were friends on Facebook that I'm aware of. It looked like all people that just came across it, which that was encouraging. But then the fact that, you know, nobody on Facebook really paid attention to it was not, but I don't know. Some of them could have been people from Facebook and I just didn't realize it, but it didn't seem like it was. So that's, that's another issue. And, and, and that's why I need to do some of those, um, YouTube videos. And it's funny because things go up and down. I mean, I have shows that, you know, a few where I got a thousand people to listen a one or two. And then, um, where I had periods where every show was over a hundred. And then I've had periods where every show was like 30 um, listens. So, uh, and a lot of it depends on the subject and all of that. And I'm not in it to, you know, I, I have donations set up at my site as well. I rarely even bring it up because I don't do this for money. I do this because it's my way of getting the word out but I'm definitely and I think in a way that's why the show is not in my opinion as good as it used to be along with the fact that I had some great co-host that really brought a lot to the show and they didn't leave because we had issues or anything like that they went on to do other things or didn't um have time to like some people, one of them had some personal issues. One of them, I think, was personal as well, but just kind of just totally got out of uh, activism and it was kind of just laying low for whatever reason. And then, of course, so Ellen, uh, who does the Illumination Hour, went on to do another show and then came back to do her own show on the network, which is great, which she's on hiatus from uh, for now. But she has done 29 episodes, which is great, and hopefully she'll come back soon. Uh, but she didn't leave because of anything bad. It's she needs uh, She's focusing on uh, school right now. So... And I wish her the best and I appreciate the time that 
she put into the show. And hopefully, like I said, she, she, I, I didn't get to talk to her in detail yet. Um, but from what I understood, she plans on coming back at some point. So hopefully that will be soon, but we'll be right back after this nonpartisan liberty for all check us out nonpartisan liberty for all.com hey an alien yes i have traveled across space to check on the progress of your species cool shall i take you to our leader your what our leader the guy in charge the guy in charge of what well in charge of everything you have one guy in charge of everything? No, no, he's in charge of government. What is government? Well, government makes the rules for us. It tells us what we can do and what we can't do. So is government really smart? They come up with wise rules for you to follow? Well, mostly. But some of its rules are really stupid. Do you disregard those rules? No, we have to follow the rules, even if they are stupid or we disagree with them. Government punishes anyone who disobeys the rules. So you are slaves to government? No, 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 it's not like that at all. Government works for us, the people. It serves us. We're the boss. It tells you what to do, and it punishes you with violence if you disobey it, and yet you're its boss? Yeah. But there are some things government does that you don't like. Well, yeah, not everything government does is popular. Like spending on wars, for example. What is a war? It's when government basically spends the people's money on weapons and soldiers and then sends them over to the other side of the world to kill a bunch of people over there and destroy their country. I don't like it that government does this. Well, I can see why you might not like that. Have you humans reached the stage where you generally consider stealing, enslaving and killing each other to be bad things? Oh yeah, we know that. Don't steal, don't attack, don't assault. But you give money to government and they use it to kill people. Well, yeah. But government does good things with tax money as well. Why don't you stop paying for the things you don't like and only pay for the good things it does? No, we can't do that. You can't just decide to stop paying taxes because the rules say that everyone has to pay taxes. But the rules come from government though, don't they? Yeah. So government made a rule which says that Everyone has to pay them money. So everyone pays taxes because if they didn't, government would punish them using violence? Well, yes, but most people don't mind paying taxes. Most people feel obligated to pay taxes and obey government laws because it's for the good of society. Society needs government and that means we all have to pay taxes. So just to make sure I've got this straight, government makes the rules and you feel obligated to follow the rules, even the ones you don't like, and it tells you what to do and threatens to punish you if you don't do what it says, and it uses some of the money that it's taken from you using threats of violence to pay for things you don't like and actually think are immoral, like mass murder. Yeah, but we can ask it to please tell us to do smart things and please don't take our money and use it to kill people we're allowed to ask them to tell us to do what we want them to tell us to do are you guys just scared of this thing is government some huge monster that can just squish you at any moment if you disobey no government isn't a monster well, what is it then? Could you draw me a picture of it? Government isn't really the sort of thing you can draw a picture of. 
Maybe you could take me to it. Where is government? You mean the building? Government is a building. No, but the politicians who make up the government have buildings they work from. So government is a group of these politicians? Yeah. OK, so what species are these politicians? Well, they're human. Like you? Yeah. So politicians are humans and they're government. You're a human, but you're not government. No. So it's the politicians, they're the ones that boss the rest of you around and make you do things you don't want to do and take your money using threats of violence. But even though you're all humans, you're not allowed to boss them around and take their money? No, they'd put us in a cage if we did that. But look, it's not like the politicians can just do whatever they want. Like, a politician can't just come up to me on the street and make me give him money. They can't do that. Politicians can only do things like that in their job, when they're working for government. Oh, so politicians aren't government. They just work for government. Yeah. OK, so government isn't a monster, and it isn't a building, and it's not politicians, it's something else. And it employs politicians, who are just regular humans, who get to order everyone else around and take their money. How does a regular human become a politician? Well, that's the great thing about our government. It's a democracy. And that means that the people actually have the power. Because we get to decide who among us get to be the politicians. We get to vote. And if a politician starts doing things we don't like, we can just replace him with someone else at the next election. So the people that get chosen to be politicians only get to boss people around and take their money for a short time, and then they go back to being regular humans? Exactly. That sounds like a powerful position to be in. But if you get to choose who does that, I assume that politicians are always the wisest, most honest, caring and respected people among you. Well, no, not really. I wouldn't say politicians are known for being honest, or wise, or caring. And they're certainly not the most respected people among us. Come to think of it, most politicians are lying, power-hungry crooks. The ones you chose? Yeah, they're always doing things we don't like. They use taxpayers' money to enrich themselves and their friends, and they never keep their promises to voters. They've been caught stealing and lying and taking bribes, and they mostly do what the big corporations want. Yeah, they're always doing stuff like that. They're completely corrupt. They're a bunch of lying crooks. But you said that most humans know that stealing and beating each other up and killing are wrong. And you said that you have the power because you can change who's in charge. So why don't you just replace the lying, thieving, murderous, crooked politicians with some regular people? Well, we don't try to elect lying crooks. It just always turns out that way. But we have to have a government because some humans are nasty and might kill or enslave or steal. Civilization just couldn't survive without government. Let me get this straight. Because you're worried about the small number of nasty people that are willing to kill, enslave and steal, you think it's necessary for your survival to have a system where some humans among you, for a short while, get to call themselves the government, and they get to order everyone else around like slaves and, if they want, commit mass murder overseas using money they stole using threats of violence. Politicians get to kill, enslave and steal, because if they didn't, someone else might? And you try to elect good, honest people to be politicians, but what happens every time is that the people you elect turn out to be corrupt, evil, lying crooks. That's your system. Yeah, that's pretty much government.
Hi, my name is Brett, and I'm currently recovering from a dangerous and extreme belief system. A belief system that if I had not taken action, most likely would have landed me in jail or even a mental institution. This belief system has many names, but it is most often referred to as libertarianism. For years, I would frighten ordinary people with long rants about the non-aggression principle. That's the central ethical stance in libertarianism, which asserts that the initiation of physical force against persons or property or the threat of such force is inherently illegitimate, regardless of what kind of excuses somebody makes up to aggress. I know. When I hear myself say it out loud today, I realize how crazy I once was. But I've made a lot of progress. Through my exposure to new points of view and sources of information, I've realized that I was being just too optimistic about the huge group of people who live their lives peacefully and mind their own business, and too cynical about the tiny group of people who disregard these utopian notions of non-aggression, property rights, and self-ownership in order to keep us safe and maintain stability. Even though a lot of the time it does seem like they have no problem treating our communities and the entire planet like their own personal f***ing woe. I'm sorry. Still trying to let go of some of this negative imagery. Like I said, recovery is a process. But it wasn't just the flaws in libertarian thinking. It was also the dangers. This occurred to me one day when somebody who lives in the real world asked me the question, what would you do if you woke up tomorrow and government was gone? I had never thought about it before, and at that point, a terrifying worst-case, worst-case scenario started to play out in my mind. And before I was even halfway through this imaginative what-if scenario, things got so dark that I was forced to swear off the philosophy of liberty for good. Because of the difficult economic situation, we would have to assume that there would be a significant spike in property crime, theft, and looting. Now, libertarians might try to argue that property owners would demand protection services and somebody would quickly rise up to meet that demand. But I think things would be a little too chaotic for that. Now, imagine this. A sudden and enormous increase in violence. The first kind of violence would be property owners trying to defend what is theirs, which libertarians would argue, rightfully so, that they have a right to do. But friends, this is a worst-case scenario. So there would also be a rise in violent crime in furtherance of theft, and things would quickly spin even more out of control. Now, libertarians might again argue at this point that whatever violence or theft is taking place would be far less than what the state was carrying out the very day before. But don't worry, my fellow non-libertarians, I'm about to make this scenario much, much worse in my imagination. Even if most people turned out to be peaceful and capable of rational thought and recognize that violence is totally impractical, there's always going to be bad people. And they would have decided, for whatever reason, that they were going to continue going around and enacting random violence on whoever they want to get whatever they need. Now, at this point, again, the libertarian would chime in and say those kinds of thugs would be drastically outnumbered by peaceful and cooperative people. But in the worst case scenario, these violent actors wouldn't stop just because they were outnumbered. They would band together. They would carry out their violence in predation against the people in groups to increase their chances of success. And what we would have over time, maybe it would take a few weeks, maybe it would take a few months, maybe even a few years, groups of these violent marauders going around, finding communities filled with peaceful and productive people, getting along and living their lives, and they would go in and kill them all and take their stuff. And I can already hear the libertarians saying that is so stupid, if these violent marauders killed all the productive people, they would die off themselves. Since they don't know how to do anything besides violence, they would eventually starve or run out of resources. And that would be the end of it. But I'm one step ahead of you. See, over time, we have to assume that the marauders, the thugs, would get smarter. 
And after several bands of these thugs had died from starvation or lack of resources because they killed all the people who knew how to do and get all the stuff, they would realize that when they raid a village, they have to leave some productive people alive so they can come back later and take the new stuff that they made. And over time, they would actually develop even more subtle and efficient methods of exploiting their victims. Instead of roaming around or periodically going back to a village and killing more people and taking more stuff, sooner or later, they would just move in and live amongst the productive people. See, in the worst case scenario, they would be really diabolical. Instead of all this back and forth, back and forth, surprise, here we are again, within a few years, people would just be used to them. And they would also get used to the fact that when they want to, these thugs are going to take their stuff. Maybe rough them up a little bit. It's getting pretty bad, isn't it, libertarians? Well, guess what? It gets worse. From the darkest corners of my fear-filled imagination comes this idea. What if these thugs, these predators, were so clever that eventually they realized that their little system could continue unabated if they just bribed the people. You see, after the thugs took everything they wanted for themselves and gave whatever they wanted to their friends, what if they just took whatever was left and offered it as kind of like a kickback to the productive people in the community? We are your masters. But if you tolerate that, maybe once in a while we'll throw up a new building here or a new bridge over there, some pavement down over there. So why don't we just continue along with this little arrangement because, as you already know, we are really awesome at violence. And if you don't agree, we can still just kill you. Remember like how we used to do. I know this all sounds sick, but these kinds of people are out there, libertarians. You're going to have to face that. You know what else? If they were really clever, they would scare the people into compliance. Not with their own violence all the time, but they could actually threaten the people with the violence of other gangs. They could say, hey, you know, yeah, we might be violent, but guess what? We're not the most violent gang out there. A couple towns away, there's an even more violent gang. And if we weren't here, they would come here and kill all of you. We're actually protecting you from them. So, you're welcome. And once you bring the emotion of fear into it, it's over. People wouldn't be able to reason anymore. And this gang would now be there for good. Now, at this point, again, the libertarian chimes in and says, people are smarter than that. And sooner or later, somebody would stand up, if not many people, somebody would stand up and say, this is insulting. This is bribery. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to be robbed in exchange for little petty favors that could probably just as easily, if we put some thought into it, be done by the community. And I don't want to accept all of this robbery and threats just because of some scare story about some other violent gang that could come here. There's a violent gang already here. And the people would agree, and there would be an uprising, and that would be the end of it, says the libertarian. But I got some bad news. These groups of predators, the existence of which has apparently never even occurred to the people who want to live in some kind of libertarian utopia... They've got one more trick up their sleeve in the worst case scenario, and this one is a doozy. Now for this last one, you'll have to bear with me because this sounds so ridiculous and far-fetched, I'm not even exactly sure how this would come to be. But imagine this. The thugs somehow convince the people to surrender control of the channels of information, communication, and education to the gang itself. Again, I don't, I don't know how that happens, but in the worst case scenario, you have to think that it could be possible. Maybe they go after the children. Yeah, they bribe parents. People are already used to bribes with free daycare. I know it doesn't sound like something that good people would allow to happen, but if enough time had passed, these people would have become pretty habituated to dependence on the gang. As daycare becomes more sophisticated and better funded, the children are forced to stay there longer and longer. They are fed a new language and subsequently a new way of thinking about the predators. Instead of describing the relationship accurately with words like theft and threats, they're given new words that distort reality. First couple generations, it might be tough, but after that, the kids would come home, they would complain, they would talk about how terrible it is, they would talk about how much it sucks, and the parents could just dismiss it by saying something like, hey, we all have to do it. And even though this worst-case scenario, I admit, is very far-fetched, 
the libertarians at this point would have to admit that within a generation or two, the violent predators would have no more significant problems managing their herds of peaceful and productive people. They might have to deal with the occasional rogue who questions their authority or their legitimacy, but probably not even directly after a while, the indoctrinated people would do that for them. They would say, without the violent gang, which, and it wouldn't be called that anymore, they would have thought of a new name for it, who would maintain order? Who would take care of the children? Who would protect us from violent people who want to do us harm? Who would keep our food supply safe? As my worst-case scenario vision of this anarchistic world grows even darker, other groups of thugs recognize the success that this gang has had, and they copy that model. It is replicated all over the world. Even as their control over the people stabilized, the gangs would still be plenty violent. They would fight with each other. Here's a really sad thing. Because of the messages that all the people were absorbing in daycare, they would actually cheer when the gang that preys on them slaughters a group of people that another gang preys on. It could get that bad. But if this got bad enough and continued long enough, the entire world would just become divided up into these gang territories. And at this most tragic ending, a good person, a hardworking and peaceful person who just wanted to live his or her life free of coercion would realize that there is no place on earth that they could go. The end. Wait a minute. Nonpartisan liberty for all, and we are back here on this Thursday night. February 2nd, live from Las Vegas, Nevada. And if you'd like to call in, 702-470-7664 or username Nonpartisan Liberty for All on Skype. So there was a woman who actually stood up to the fucking police, which if everybody else did, then the government could not enforce their laws. It's called noncompliance. But the cop was going to shoot, there's video of it, the cop was going to shoot her dog, and she stepped in front of the cop. She got arrested, from what I understand. I kind of just skimmed through the article, but I saw the video. Um, well, some of it. <laughs> and um, well, it was a short article. But she was found not guilty surprisingly enough i think the only reason that she was found not guilty is because it was a dog it's hard uh she was charged with misdemeanor obstruction everything's obstruction that's what i get charged with you're obstructing our investigation of you how, how am i doing that i don't even know you're investigating me and, and even in obstruction if you read the law at least in nevada um it says that you have to have intent. Obviously, there was no intent. Anyway, that was just a... That whole thing was just a, another example of exactly how things work. Anyway, she was found not guilty. Um, But... She filed a lawsuit and was told she has no grounds to file the lawsuit. But an attorney took her case uh, pro bono. And, well, no, not for the, the lawsuit. <laughs> she was given a public defender who was married to a state trooper. That's crazy. But for the, uh, an attorney took her case no pro bono and found her not guilty. But uh, a national group advocating for the humane treatment of animals filed a lawsuit. 
that but that's the only reason you usually never see something like that but animals animals can get to people because people are you know so many people love animals so but she could have got shot by this motherfucker but she chose to step up and and save her dog and end up getting arrested over it which is ridiculous but not surprising that's what happens and the um you know she probably won't win any lawsuit and even though she was found not guilty it doesn't matter you never win when it comes to getting arrested once you're arrested you've already lost so essentially unless you can somehow sue and get money out of it you've lost because then at least you get something to compensate you for what you have to go through when you get arrested. You might have to wait in jail before you get bailed out. Um, The stress you have to go through the time, the going to court, all of this shit that you got to deal with. If you're found not guilty, you're never reimbursed or you're never given you know the cops aren't punished it's it's a no-lose situation for the government usually a lot of shootings they do win in the civil lawsuits but it's still no loss for them it's not out of their budget and it's not their money so it's it's a loss for the well, it's not even a loss for the government because the government got all that money from extorting it from people. So it's a no-lose situation. The justice system is the injustice system. is so fucked up. And people that say that it's the greatest system in the world, they are fucking delusional. And the most important, I've talked about this before, the, I think, three most important things because it, the the country's an oligarchy already you have no say that's just how it is you still have people that are stupid enough to want to give away more of their freedoms and they think that they can give away your freedom at the same time and i'm to me it's like hey you want to give away your freedom go fucking head but you have people that believe that, oh, you should live this way, as I was talking about, and give up their freedom for whatever reason, and that they want you to give up yours as well, which isn't theirs to give. Although the government, who has no real authority, will take it anyway, will take away your freedom. You're naturally born human rights or whatever you want to call them. I I don't know that I like calling them human rights because then the people that uh, promote positive rights, the right to health care, the right to all this shit that you don't have a right to because you're talking about other people's labor or other people's money they call them human rights and people are getting fucking brainwashed from that. Now it's like, you know, they want to force people to not only live how they want to live, but to pay for what they value or what they think people should be entitled to. And when it comes down to it, Not only does that person not have the right to give away your authority, and they, you know, of course, go through government and all this shit, but government doesn't have the right, sorry, I said authority, freedom, but government doesn't have, that's the whole thing that people don't understand, and 
it's just even frustrating thinking about it because it's yeah, as I was saying, it's gotten to the point where government's an oligarchy. You can't, you have no say. You can't do anything about it through the system. So that's why I believe the only way to change things is non-compliance. But government doesn't have any authority. They are a gang that have a bunch of men with guns. And that's a fact. That's what it is. It's not a conspiracy theory. I mean, then you can talk about all the things that they do that are corrupt and violate people's rights and all of these things that the CIA does and the military and Congress and whoever, the police. But they don't have any authority. Where does their authority come from? They say the consent of the governed. Well, nobody alive today signed the Constitution. Nobody consented. This whole social contract or perceived consent or any of it is just a way to convince you that they have a right to do all this shit. They have none. Just like all of these other people who are so fucking stupid or so brainwashed that they want to give up their rights, that government has convinced them that they need to give up their rights for whatever reason. And they're like, yeah, we need to do this. Even the people that think, you know, background checks for guns or drugs should be illegal. It's all the same shit. And they're going to do the same thing with every other fucking thing. That because of terrorists or because of this or because of that, whatever it might be, whatever excuse they use to exploit the situation, it's just about more control. And they tell you you should respect police. Why? Why should you respect police? Who are police? They are people who went and applied for a fucking job as a cop. So that means what? The same thing with judges. A lot of them are voted in. So they happen to, they went to law school they failed as a fucking lawyer and got people to vote for them. So you should somehow respect them because of that. Or you should respect government officials because they got votes. Really? I don't automatically respect anybody. Actually, I think it's the opposite because anybody who runs for anything, it's because they want control and power. Anybody who becomes a police officer, whether they want to admit it to themselves or not, deep down, there's some, especially now, there's some control or power or authority over people, which is fake authority. I mean, again, it's, it's based off of fear for most people, but you, well, You have those brainwashed people that actually believe in this bullshit that think that the government has legitimate authority over somebody, which nobody has legitimate authority over anybody else. Only you have legitimate authority over yourself. But somehow people are convinced that the government, the police, whoever has some kind of authority over you. Some legitimate authority. They are nothing but a criminal fucking gang, a mafia. Now, as I've said before, the U.S. government has been really good at propaganda 
at convincing people of all of this bullshit, at brainwashing people, at instilling fear in people and giving them the illusion of freedom. The background check thing is really bothering me because I, I listening to people, the same person who said, we need AR-15s because Piers Morgan, that fuckhead when he was on, he got canceled, would ask people, why do you need an AR-15? I can't really do an English accent that well. That would be his question, everybody. I don't understand why everybody needs an AR-15. Why would you need one? And he's like, but you won't answer the question. You know, and people would say, well, they're good for the whatever. But uh, Ben Shapiro said, actually did say that, that because, you know, if the government gets tyrannical. Now, first of all, gets, they have already. I don't understand how people can't comprehend the spying and collection of data and what that actually means. It's the equivalent of them going in your house anytime they want to and collecting all your stuff and then creating a file on you. Or making copies of everything, taking pictures of everything, making a a list of everything you own. And it goes beyond that because they link all this shit to bank records, fucking credit card uh, charges. Um, You can even see what food you buy. That's why they have those cards. All of this shit. Oh, but, you know, I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah, you're not doing anything wrong now. But from their algorithms, they may predict, hey, you might be a threat in the future. Or something that you're doing is now illegal. Because you're not supposed to think for yourself anymore at some point. Or you're not supposed to do this. Or you're not supposed to do that. So for somebody to say that and at the same time say they support background checks, I don't know, it just disturbs me. It disturbs me that people have been brainwashed so far that it depends on the person. If When you talk about, because there's more and more people that think all drugs should be legal. But you think about drugs and how many people make their opinions based off of government media. And that's it. They don't know shit about drugs. They don't, they they haven't listened to, you know, uh, Dr. Carl Hart and his studies or actually done real research not from the fucking people pushing propaganda that don't know shit neither so you have people that form opinions based on bullshit But I feel like things are so far gone and people are so far gone that it's like there's no return from certain things. And they're trying to take that to another level. Like there's going to be a point, And I think we're almost there now. Um Or we're partially there where, you know, if you use cash or you have carry a lot of cash, you must be a drug dealer or a terrorist or a criminal. You know, that it's automatically assumed. 
or uh, there was another one that I was thinking of earlier. But if you uh, do certain things, it's like, or you want to be have an anonymous phone, you must be a criminal. Or you don't want to use banks, you must be a criminal. It's just like that to not have everything you do tracked if you're trying to hide anything you do because of privacy that you're doing something wrong. And privacy is just gone anyway as it is. So it's it's like you know I I don't know it, it's hard to say that well I'm not going to because I I'm not going to tell anybody what to do it's hard to say well you should do this or you should do that or whatever because I'm not going to tell you what to do and it's your life and you know, I believe in non-compliance. That's what I believe in. And I believe in self-defense. And them going together. That you don't comply and you defend yourself. Not fucking uh, civil disobedience. And I've talked about that before. How So you break a, a, a law because it's a bullshit law. But then you let them arrest you, kidnap you. Because none of these laws, except for ones where you hurt somebody else or violate somebody else's freedom, like I've talked about before, you know, rape, murder, assault and or uh, property crimes. They have no authority. To arrest you for that. Just because the government tells them doesn't mean shit. Just because they passed a law, a bunch of politicians got together and said, we're going to make this illegal, doesn't mean shit. It's meaningless. And you could say, well, but we all live in an organized society and in an organized and all that bullshit. And... That's what it is. Bullshit. Because unless every single person agrees to that. And it can't even be possible because new people are born all the time. So what are you going to do? It's like it only applies to it can only apply to people who allow it to apply to them. As I said, if you want to give up your rights, that's fine. You can give up your rights. But anything else is kidnapping. That's why the, all the police are criminals. And I always use the example of drugs. Because the majority of the laws that they arrest people for, even though I, I just kind of focus on drugs because it's really easy to understand, but the majority of laws that they arrest people for are invalid. They're an authority that got together and said, we're the authority and we have the, we own you and we have the right to tell you what to do. Now, a bunch of people think they actually have a say or that they somehow are, you know, have a choice. Well, we, we voted well, what did you vote for? Somebody to represent you? And first of all, you don't have a choice. You were born into the system. And you didn't vote. There were thousands, hundreds of thousands of laws passed before you uh 
were even alive. So the majority of laws, it's kidnapping. Just like giving a citation and then not paying it and putting out a warrant for your arrest. That's kidnapping. They have no authority to do that. I said because other people said, well, the government passed a law and other people approve of it. Well, first of all, you can't say that everybody else approves of it because they don't. Some people may, but it doesn't matter because they don't have the authority neither. Nobody has the authority over you to tell you what you cannot, can and cannot do as long as it doesn't directly affect them. And then they still don't have authority over you. It's just you violated their rights, their freedom. In that case. But it doesn't mean that they have any any right or authority over you. That's why all this bullshit where people get shot by police and, oh, if they just obeyed. If you just obeyed and, you know, it doesn't matter if they violate your rights or not, just obey. Well, what if I went around with a bunch of people with guns and did the same thing and said, well, we have authority because, you know, we just made it up. Because what do you think the fucking government did? They fucking made it up. That's exactly what they did. They got together and said, we're starting a government. Then they overthrew it and said, now we're, we're going to have a constitution. Before we had an Articles of Confederation. It's an illusion. It's bullshit. Yet people bow down to it. And I'm going to end things uh, early today. Uh, I appreciate everybody for tuning in as always. And, you know, we're at the point, and I I keep saying this, and that's really all I can do where uh, people got to stand up because they can't arrest everybody. They can't kill everybody. I guess they could if they really wanted to, but it's about standing up and recognizing that you own yourself and that as long as you don't hurt anybody else or steal from anybody else, that you have the right to do what you want. And government authority is nothing but a made-up thing. So, hopefully people will think about it and understand it if they even listen to this. Because not a lot of people are saying a lot of the same things. I know Larkin Rose is the only one I can think of who's really out there, you know, saying it. I'm sure there's other people, but it's just, it's getting worse and worse, and it will continue to get that way. So if you care about freedom true freedom not the bullshit the republicans and conservatives talk about then you know start speaking out start standing up nonpartisan liberty for all.com check us out have a good night everybody listen to police officers commands listen to what we tell you and just stop the nation